What's globalization? Actually, the best definition of it I know of, if I can remember it, is by a very well-known development economist, Canadian development economist, guy named Gerald Haliner, who tried to summarize it in a little ditty, which went something like this. Don't hold me to the exact word. He said, the, the poor complain, they always do, but that's just idle chatter. Our system brings rewards to all, at least to all who matter. <laughs> that essentially captures it. Okay, I can go home. <laughs> and, uh, whenever I say globalization, I mean in quotes. You know, what's called globalization is one specific modality of international integration. There's nothing wrong with international integration. In fact, it's a great thing. It's nice to meet people from other countries and all sorts of other stuff. <laughs> but there are various forms of possible international integration, and the one that's called globalization is one particular one. Like, it's not the new international economic order that the South was calling for, and it's not the new global system that they're now calling for. It's a different one. This new one, the one that is called global, the official one, you know, the one that Thomas Friedman writes laudatory books about and so on. Among its other properties are that uh, countries have to open up their borders to uh, free imports, so they have to accept uh, imports from highly subsidized uh, U.S., uh, European, and Canadian uh, agribusiness, which of course instantly wipes out uh, domestic production for domestic needs, and that means that poor farmers are stuck. Uh, one thing they can do is flee to the cities, which has the nice effect that they create a massive labor force which lowers wages uh, and uh, means that uh, U.S. and European manufacturers or by now Japanese and Korean manufacturers who are uh, putting, say, assembly plants or whatever abroad can benefit from cheaper labor and consequently wages can go down and in fact do go down while the economy booms. Mexico is a dramatic case. Uh, but if, if farmers don't uh, move to the urban slums to become an excess labor force they again, and try to produce something, it can't be commodities for the domestic market for food because they'll be wiped out by imported goods. So once again, they become what's called a rational peasant in the technical literature. A rational peasant is a peasant who understands that you have to produce for export and you have to seek the maximum profit. Okay, so you sort of spell that out, produce for export, stable markets, maximum profit, well, you get the same answer as before. Coca, you know, poppies and so on. And that's what's happening. So the globalization, in particular the undermining of the attempts of the South 30 years ago to create a form of globalization directed toward the interests of the developing world, that means you know, al the, almost the entire world. One of the major consequences of this, and it's, you know, it's no big secret, like you can read it in standard books of political economy and so on, was to greatly accelerate uh, production of what we call drugs. I mean, they're not the most lethal drugs. The most lethal ones are produced in places like North Carolina. But what we call lethal drugs here, peasants have been driven to it. They really have no choices, uh, in part by the choice, and it was a choice, it's not an economic law, the choice by the powerful states 30 years ago to institute a particular form of international economic integration, what's called globalization, uh, in preference to another one, uh, one which would have, for example, as one of its properties, and there were many others, things like stabilization of primary commodity prices, and the what are called neoliberal programs, like opening up your orders to imports from subsidized uh, agro-export from northern agribusiness, that has the same effect. Uh, there's a lot more like this. I mean, a lot of the, of the uh, w w what happens to the rational peasants, incidentally, after they've learned their lessons properly, you know, they kind of like the equivalent of going to uh, Harvard or MIT or Chicago uh, graduate school and getting a degree in economics, so they become rational peasants. Well, once they've learned the lesson, they're rewarded. Uh, they're rewarded with uh, helicopter <laughs> gunships that you and I pay for with chemical and biological warfare, including uh, new uh, experimental uh, biological techniques that will have who knows what effect, and by what's called here a drug war. You know, that's the reward for having learned the lessons. 
uh, after having been essentially forced into a particular kind of uh, production by the way globalization works out. That's one of its less discussed features. Going back to the Declaration of the South, the poor are complaining, as they always do. They're calling for globalization, for international economic integration. They want this, uh, but are calling for a form that will uh, be based on the right of development and in particular the right of independent development.